Today I am going to be showing you six different coupe designs that work really well, everything from free to paid, to give you all some different ideas on how you can combine some of the concepts and create your own perfect coupe. Several of you have asked for chicken coop design, how I have mine structured, um, and some of the different factors that went into how we decided to build it. And that one does great for us. Um, we can make further improvements. There's always this trial and error process. Um, but I wanted to show you all several different ideas so you can find the one that fits best for you. We are going to look at my own chicken coop at my homestead, as well as several of my friends and we are even going to be taking a look at Ava Tuvin, which is a prefab chicken coop that you can use. Um, you purchase it online and all you need is a screwdriver to put it together so that you guys can figure out your flock size, how much room you have, how much money, time, experience, and decide what might work best for you when you are looking to design a new chicken coop for your urban homestead. This is a friend of mine's coop and they really maximized um, the whole process and they got this coop for free off of Facebook, Craigslist, okay. I can't remember. Um, so that is a huge plus. Um, and then instead of building an enclosed run to go with the coop, they just opted to keep it completely free and they have a section of their backyard garden area fenced off from the rest of it so that that acts as their run. They come out every day, they open the door, the chickens are able to free range in a larger area, and then they can safely put them away at night. When I asked her what she would change if she could, she said she would really strongly prefer to be able to walk in to clean the coop, understandably so. Uh, but for free, you can't really complain. <laughs> it's got a roost bar inside for them to go into at night, as well as a egg box or um, nest box that they can access from the outside of the fenced in run area so that if they don't want to um, walk in and have the chickens come running up for treats or whatnot, they can easily access everything. So for those of you who are not especially handy, uh, if you're looking for quick and easy, flat pack or prefab chicken coops are definitely an option. Especially if you're looking for like a good starter coop, an affordable chicken coop, um, where you can just get the basics in and get some chickens. I went with the Ava Tuvin uh, for a friend of mine. We're getting them some chickens. It's the um, 45 for the, the style and it houses four to six chickens. And we're gonna be assembling it today. Uh, it's supposed to be only screwdriver needed. We do have um, our drill that we'll use. Um, so we are gonna be using that. Maybe we'll get it done in even less time. They claim two people, 45 minutes and a screwdriver will get the job done. So let's see how long it takes. So we were able to build this, my husband and I, in about 40 minutes, just under their suggested or allotted time frame. It went together pretty easy. Uh, the instructions were pretty intuitive. So as far as build and everything, I think this is a really good entry point for people who haven't had chickens before and you're not sure if you're going to want to keep them long term. Uh, if you are on a budget, this is I think around 350 It houses four to six. I think six might be a little generous um, unless you're doing like bantams or something like that. But for 350 bucks, you know, like this houses them. It's quick to assemble. It's easy. It's simple. You know, I think it gets the job done. Uh, it has lots of entry points to be able to easily clean the coop. Um, I'm not a huge fan. They have a slide out tray and those can get a little jammed up sometimes. So those aren't my favorite cleaning style. The other thing that I would say is a maybe, especially here in Florida, rest of the country, totally fine. Um, but we get so hot and humid and chickens are really sensitive to respiratory issues. So I really like to have like open air, open flow coops with as much ventilation as possible. Um, and this one has two entry points. So you will get a little bit of um, cross ventilation as well as a window at the back. Um, but I like to see them even a little bit more open. So that's a, a marginal. Um, but aside from those two um, issues, it's, it's a good coop. It's a good design. It should be easy to clean and it gets the job done. So this coop is one that my husband and I helped design. It's at my daughter's preschool. And we were able to use some refurbished or repurposed materials as well as some purchased materials. So um, we did hardware cloth, which is 
critical for keeping out rats and such. Um, so we paid for that and we also paid for PT on the lower part so that we didn't have a lot of rot. But the whole upper um, coop portion um, and several other elements like the ladder and such, we were able to repurpose. So we were able to cut down costs a little bit that way. Um, some things that we love about this coop were exterior access to um, feeding and the nest box and such so that we can easily allow the kids to help us perform daily chores on the coop. Um, it's also got a great ventilation and cross draft so that um, the birds stay healthy, um, no respiratory issues with it being a small enclosed coop. If we were to redo this, um, we would certainly um, prefer, strongly prefer, um, to have this either walk-in or with more access points for easier cleaning. Um, we were trying to do this on a little bit of a budget and because of that, um, it's not the easiest coop in the world to clean. Uh, we use a deep litter method, so it's not the worst. Um, we don't have to clean that frequently, but when we do, not the easiest. So this is a coop from my good friend who was able to build the entire thing on his own, no help needed. So this is a one man coop construction, um, which is pretty impressive. A lot of the coop designs when you're building things out require help, extra hands um, or tools. Um, obviously still needed tools here, but they were some pretty basic tools. He constructed it out of cattle panel, um, did some PT wood on the bottom so there's no rot, lined it with chicken wire, um, and it is uh, safe and dry for the girls, easy to assemble. Um, he did use the back half for storage and he said the one thing that he would change if he were to redesign the coop would be to have um, instead of chicken wire in between the storage area and the coop area for some sort of solid barrier just to keep the dust down and stuff like that. Um, but it's a great simple coop design um, that just about anybody can put together on their own. Uh, and he also utilizes the same concept that that other coop did where he has the coop um, and then he has a free run area so that he can just come in and give them some extra space without all of the added construction cost of, you know, a roof and walls and stuff like that to give them more room to roam. So nice and simple coop design and uh, definitely one to keep in your back pocket if you're looking for easy. This chicken coop here was a custom build by the owners. It houses up to eight chickens and they did make it so that you could easily walk in for cleaning or checking on the chickens or whatnot. Um, so this is one that you can actually walk into which is a really nice feature. Uh, they have three nest boxes in here. They have lots of roost space inside. Um, they did do a little bit of repurposing. So they used sticks and stuff for them to perch on and jump around on, which is kind of fun. Um, and this coop, um, when I asked the owners one thing they loved about it and one thing they didn't, they said that they love that it's as large as it is, it's easy to clean and houses eight chickens. But they said if they were to do it again, that they would opt for pressure treated wood. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of decay here. It is an older coop, um, but that pressure treated wood lasts way longer. And because we're not trying to grow food in it or anything like that, it's likely to do just fine and not bother the chickens. So in this case, especially um, for like anything that's gonna be touching soil level or anything like that, pressure treated wood is definitely a good option. So this is my chicken coop. And our first chicken coop that we ever built in our first home with our first flock was itty bitty, teeny tiny, super overbuilt, um, not good air ventilation. We learned a lot of lessons to say the least. And our next coop we got, we got uh, for free off of Craigslist or Facebook. And then we built on an extension and it was improved. But then our third house, as you can see, there's a, a repeating issue here, uh, moving. So when we built this coop, we said we are going to spend the money, build it right, how we've learned, which is kind of expensive, but we made it so that it's compartmentalized. So that all you have to do is take out some screws and it flat packs into like, uh, you can stack each of these panels on top of each other so that if we do move, we are easily able to bring the coop with us so that we're not constantly having to go through this reworking process. That's one of the things that we absolutely love that we did with this coop. 
A few things that we wanted to make sure we had for this coop was automation. Uh, we're a busy mama, a uh, busy family, and we also travel a lot. So we have an automatic feeder that holds an entire bag of feed. We put in an automated water system that hooks up to a hose from our house. Um, we did put in a rollaway nest box so that the kids could easily help us harvest the eggs from the outside without letting out the chickens. Uh, so we built in a lot of automation features. And then we also did for our coop portion, um, we do have it so that we can remove the plywood. We keep it up during the winter, give them a little bit more protection and warmth. And then we are able to take this panel and have it be completely open and um, free flowing for good circulation during the hotter summer months. Uh, and we then also improved upon this and we kind of modified Jeff Lawton's um, chicken um, tractor, not tractor approach, but he has a system where you keep the manure underneath the um, roost uh, and you build that up for really high manure production. Um, and then you're able to keep the chickens out of it so that they're not constantly scratching it and it decomposes in place for you there. Um, so we've really liked that addition to this coop. Um, and between all of it, very easy to maintain. It's all dry, so we only have to change the bedding. Um, we do a deep uh, litter method with this coop. We only have to refresh the litter maybe every two or three months, which is really low maintenance. Um, and we only actually clean it out completely about once a year. Uh, so very low maintenance. This coop was not cheap to build, but we know that because of the materials we used and the way we designed it, that we're going to be able to use it for years to come. Hopefully this gave you guys some ideas on how you can pick the best coop for you. There's all different size coops. Um, there's different cost um, and experience level like going into this. So everybody's coop is going to look completely different from the one down the street and that's cool. Um, if you guys are interested in the Ava Tuvin chicken coop, I do have a link down below in the show notes with the 5% um, off discount code. So make sure to check that out. It does help to support the work here I do at the channel and it gives you guys a discount as well. So pretty sweet. Now that you have your chicken coop picked out, make sure to check out this video next on how to raise and pick your new baby chicks.